from the School of Journalism and Mass Communication at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. This is Carolina Week. Thanks for joining us for the February 28th edition of Carolina Week. I'm Brooke Baldwin. And I'm Bridget Williams. We're proud to be bringing you coverage of Carolina news and events. The last time UNC faced off against Duke, Tar Heel fans did more damage at home than on the court. Will this Sunday's game be any different? Carolina Week's Christy Fair explains. This is the scene police and other officials want to avoid. <laughs> After the Heels won a down-to-the-wire game against Duke, Carolina fans poured onto Franklin Street. And from the way the video showed, it looked like they were really proud of it. What happened next stunned many and still has the community asking why. A handful of fans celebrated by flipping a car. Police say it won't happen again. They're already stepping up security for this Sunday's game, even though they expect a smaller crowd. We do try to plan for the time of day the day of the week, and, and that sort of thing. 30 officers will be on hand to control crowds, six more than the last big game, and 17 will be on call. Local cameras caught vandals in the act last time, and police might have their own cameras this time. Chapel Hill police are continuing to look for suspects. They recently posted flyers like this one, hoping community members with information would come forward. So far, police have charged James Haltom and Robert Davenport with felony rioting. The car was kind of overstepping that boundary, I thought. Police hope students learn by example. They'd rather keep cameras focused on the basketball court and not in criminal court. In Chapel Hill, I'm Christy Fair, Carolina Week. This Sunday's game starts at 3.30 in Chapel Hill. Many people in Chapel Hill are wondering if there's a better way to prepare for the aftermath on Franklin Street. In today's Speak Out segment, we asked members of the Carolina community what they think officials should do if Carolina beats Duke again. Uh, I think a lot of kids probably last time just didn't see a cop around or didn't see any cops get involved, so they just took advantage of that. But the cops step in and say something. Most kids are going to be smart enough to stop messing around. Um, I think just more police protection, just so that they make sure students don't get themselves in trouble. I don't necessarily believe in like locking people up, but just to be there to say, you know, you might not want to do that. I don't know that shutting the street down is the best idea, um, but I've been told that, uh, that there may not be a choice in the matter because of the volume of people that rush the street. Um, I would say just maybe more police protection, but I think it's up to the students to, to control themselves, have a good time, but not do anything to put others' lives in danger. Um, I don't think it's fair to tow cars. I think it might be a good idea to block up the street if we win. But um, I don't think it would be very smart to park there anyway. I think it's all pretty much actually up to, to the crowd. You know, if, uh, if the police want to want to try and uh, stop them, they can. But it might just sort of flare up and get even bigger than, uh, than it is to start with. Our stable of opinions is in no way scientific and shouldn't be taken as a reflection of widespread opinions on campus. Campaigning has finally wrapped up and the students at Carolina have elected a new Carolina Athletic Association president. Reed Cheney beat out opponent Michael Songer by only 190 votes, 1,556 to 1,366. After the announcement, Cheney was congratulated with hugs from his supporters and a handshake from Songer. As CAA president, he'll be responsible for homecoming, the athletic support group Carolina Fever, and making changes in the controversial basketball ticket distribution. This is the second time Cheney has been announced the CAA president, but because of questions surrounding the original election, officials decided to hold a runoff. The votes are in and the campaign posters are all coming down as another UNC election season comes to a close. That means relief for many and rest for one very busy UNC student. Carolina Week's Tim Nelson reports. Reed Cheney's the next one. <laughs> this week's crowning of the next CAA president ends a grueling five-week stretch of campaigning and elections across the UNC Chapel Hill campus. And for one senior, who wasn't on any ballots or working on any campaign staffs, it's been, well, 
exhausting. Meet Jeremy Tuckmeyer, the chair of the Board of Elections here at Carolina. Along with other members of the board, Tuckmeyer has been just about as busy as the candidates this election season. It's the behind the scenes work um, <clears throat> that, that we do. And work it is. The Board of Elections administers and oversees all campus elections while keeping corruption out of campus politics. Tuckmeyer likens his role to that of a referee. You don't want the referee to determine the outcome of the game, but you want the referee there to make sure the teams play fairly so whoever does win, you know, you can call that the winner the legitimate winner. And it's Tuckmeyer who's been doing most of the refereeing, whether it's issuing punishments for illegal campaign postings, ruffling through pages and pages of paperwork, or sending daily emails. Pretty much for the entire month of February, I've been in the office just about every day uh, when I'm not in class. With the election season coming to a close, Board of Elections Vice Chair Fred Hill, Tuckmeyer's wingman, says the shift to online voting and the success of the last five weeks wouldn't have been possible without Tuckmeyer. We've just done uh, you know, so many things for you know, getting the online voting program ready, uh, the revamp of the, uh, the campaign laws and uh, the uh, Title VI. Uh, I don't know that all those things could have been accomplished if we hadn't had Jeremy on the board. Despite the success, Tuckmeyer says being chair of the Board of Elections is a one-shot deal. He says he's learned a lot, met great people, and had a lot of fun. But he's looking forward to having some time for himself. In the fall, Tuckmeyer hopes to be back in the southern part of heaven, attending law school at Carolina. In Chapel Hill, I'm Tim Nelson, Carolina Week. Student body president-elect Justin Young will begin his search for next year's chair in the coming months. Several recent high-profile cases in UNC Honor Court have heightened students' interest in the Honor Court and the Honor Code. University officials are trying to determine if the system should change. Students, faculty, and Chancellor James Meeser met Tuesday night to discuss the value of honor at UNC. UNC has an honor code accompanied by a student-run honor court. Hot topics included the university, how the university should handle academic charges as opposed to criminal charges, and whether or not students even understand how the honor court works. Student body president Brad Matthews says Chancellor Meeser is ready to make changes in the honor court system if needed. I think Chancellor Meeser is on the ball. He's ready to look at this, and he's ready to do it alone. And, you know, he's here to have a discussion about how we can make things better, or even if we need to. So uh, he's on the right track. Attorney General said that ch changes can happen if her office gets needed help and resources. Booyah and cooler than the other side of the pillow are two phrases that might be heard at graduation ceremonies this year. ESPN Sports Sitter and anchor Stuart Scott will be the keynote speaker at this year's commencement. Scott graduated from Chapel Hill in 1987 as a communications major. Officials say that one of the main reasons for Scott's election is his energy and enthusiasm. When students were asked to email their choices to officials, Scott was one of the top vote receivers. Commencement is Sunday, May 20th at 9 a.m. Carolina students are known for doing just about anything to raise money for children. Find out why hundreds of UNC students were willing to dance till they dropped when Carolina Week continues. What could you do with the free hour of your day? Take a jog, wash your car, bake a cake, or watch TV. Ever thought about giving blood? It only takes an hour. It saved my life. Someday it may save yours. A single pint of blood can save three lives. Be a hero. Give blood. The second floor of Davis is where students go to pseudo-study. No real studying occurs here. Girls sit in the cushy chairs to scope out guys as they come up the stairs. I've never witnessed the exam break streaking that occurs there, but I'd like to see it before I graduate. No one knows the real Carolina like a student. Chapel Hill fire investigators are still wondering who deliberately set a fire at the Orange County Animal Shelter late Sunday night and why. Officials say someone planted a propane tank that exploded, killing four animals. The tank was placed in a night deposit box that's used to drop animals off after the building is closed. The shelter is operating as usual, but employees say they've, left, they've been left with $10,000 in damage and many unanswered questions. When you care for an animal, 
and then something like this happens to them, it really hits their heart hard. And we really do feel that this is such a cowardly thing for anyone to have done that I think it will be a while before they recover emotionally. If you have any information about the fire, contact Chief Caprice Melton at the Chapel Hill Fire Department at 968-2781. That number again is 968-2781. If you think you've seen some students walking a little slower to class lately, you're probably right. That's because this weekend's 24-hour charity event had hundreds of Carolina students on their feet for a long time. Almost everyone has a best friend. This weekend, some extra special youngsters discovered they now have 400 of them. They're seniors that are trying to dance 24 hours and um, make some money for the hospitals. Kids just like Monica are receiving care from the North Carolina Children's Hospital, not to mention support from hundreds of UNC Chapel Hill students. This weekend, these selfless students got together on the Carolina campus to participate in the third annual dance marathon, benefiting kids from the hospital. Participants in activities associated with Dance Marathon have raised more than $300,000 in the past three years, money that goes directly to the families through the For the Kids Fund. The event's founder says the most important part of the marathon is simply to be there. To see the emotion of everyone, uh, the dancers who are standing on their feet for 24 straight hours, the emotion of the parents, we're able to give them money, but much more importantly, we're able to give them hope. The event is called Dance Marathon, but it isn't only about dancing. In fact, it's more about patience, exhaustion, and staying on your feet for 24 straight hours. So why are nearly 400 students doing it? Participant Jesse Moore has an answer. It's an amazing event. It's going to be really fun. It's going to be tiring, but it's going to be worth it. And when they get to sit down at the end of 24 hours and they know that they've raised much money for children in the hospital, they're going to feel really good. From 7 p.m. Friday until 7 p.m. Saturday, students like Moore stood and stood and stood. Newly elected student body president Justin Young was on his feet as well. Nearly 24 hours later, Moore is exhausted. But most importantly, he's still standing. With 45 minutes left on the clock, he has mixed emotions about his experience. I'm not sure whether I like really hate myself or have really enjoyed myself. I think it's a bit of both. It's tough though. And you, you know, you gotta be ready for this. And you think, oh, no problem, 24 hours. But it's hard. And so like, do it, but be smart and prepare yourself and get some sleep first. This year's Dance Marathon raised a record high of $100,289.33. Chapel Hill Center for Child and Family Health is receiving some extra help this month from people participating in the Shamrock 5K. UNC Chapel Hill students and professors and local residents are running to help prevent child abuse. More than 300 runners circled the UNC campus Saturday in the 8th annual Shamrock 5K race. Kappa Delta Sorority sponsored the event. The race raised more than $10,000, all of which goes to preventing child abuse. The race did attract runners, but that's not the only reason people came out to the Shamrock 5K. I know a lot of families that are going to be here, running families that are going to come, and I think it's great to have the kids and the adults and the college students all together. I like the idea. I know some people who work for Prevent Child Abuse America, so I thought it was a good cause, and I decided to do it. 80% of the money raised in the Shamrock race goes to the local Center for Child and Family. The rest, rest goes to the group Prevent Child Abru Abuse America. UNC campus groups are in, the fun, in a fundraising frenzy. Feet stomped and heads spun Tuesday night in the student union for a worthy cause. Like the student groups like the Museta chapter of the Alpha Phi Alpha fraternity showed their stuff for, to raise money for Operation School Bell. Other performers included the Lorelei's and Tar Hill Voices. The Order of the Bell Tower held the talent show to raise money for Triangle Area school children who need clothing and supplies. As part of Black History Month, lots of interesting people are visiting Carolina, including Herman Boone, the head coach portrayed in the movie Remember the Titans. Denzel Washington played coach Herman Boone in the football movie. Monday night, the real coach Boone told stories about helping race relations in the city of Alexandria, Virginia, by successfully bringing together players on a newly integrated team and winning. Boone says the tips he gave his football team can apply to all of us. Learn to talk with people before you decide that you don't like them for any reason or not. Learn to respect what they stand for and not what they look like. 
then I guarantee you it'll be a better world and a better society to, to, to live in. Boone was a tough coach, but he says one thing the movie didn't show was that he never let anyone leave the locker room without a hug. Kelly, uh, the weather lately, it's been sort of wintry, it's been a mix. Are we going to have some warm temperatures for good? Yeah. Can you tell us something? <laughs> well, I can tell you something, and you're right. With cooler temperatures beginning of last weekend and some cool temperatures now, what people probably aren't thinking about is global warming, and that's what this week's weather question has to do with. Um, scientists have come up with a new prediction for the figures concerning global warming and see if you can choose the correct answer to this week's weather question. In the next 100 years, temperatures will increase by A, 1.5 degrees, B, 10 degrees, C, nothing at all, or D, 13 degrees. I'll be back with the answer after the break. Scientists have proven that his brain will develop better when you read, sing, and talk to him in full sentences from the day he is born. What do you want, honey? Let him bring out the baby in you, but you need to bring out his mind. An early start. Now that's smart. A freshman's first day in Phillips Hall is a humbling experience. You need to get to the third floor, but not every stairwell leads you there. Just as in life, take the wrong way up and you won't get anywhere. None of the corridors make sense. It's like being in a huge maze at 7.57 while you're looking for your 8 o'clock class. No one knows the real Carolina like a student. Carolina Week, the student news show. Hi, welcome back to Carolina Week. Well, we certainly have seen quite a mix of weather over the past couple of days. The weekend brought some icy conditions followed by almost summer-like weather. And if we take a look outside right now, you can see a pretty run-of-the-mill springtime day. One of the first signs of spring are always blossoming trees and flowers. And these white trees just behind Carol looked very nice today as students had a bright walk to campus with the sun filtering in and out of some fair weather clouds. Now, how long will this springtime weather stick with us? Well, we'll take a look in just a second. But first, with February finally behind us, we can look ahead to March and some average highs and lows, or what happens in an average year, we'll put it that way. The average high for March is 62 degrees with an average low of 39. And the normal amount of precipitation we see in March is about 10 days. Now, that doesn't mean 10 days are going to be a washout, but it does mean that over the period of 10 days throughout the month, you can see a rain event. And that's not bad, especially when you look ahead to April and May. But, so that's March for you. And what kind of weather is the first couple of days of March going to hold for us? Well, if we look at the weather map, you can see two systems that are going to be our major weather producers from now up until the end of the weekend. You can see this one low pressure system to our south. That's going to be kind of pulling up the moisture from the Gulf. And when combined with this low pressure system from the north, that'll be ushering in some cooler temperatures, which by the end of the weekend will mean dreary and cold, rainy days for us. Now, on Friday, the things still don't look all that bad. Highs will be in the mid-50s. And if we look ahead to Saturday and Sunday on your forecast, you can see temperatures start to cool down just a little bit. 49 degrees on Saturday. 42 on Sunday, and you do see that chance of rain on Sunday and Monday. So the beginning of next week isn't looking all that great. Now, if you're heading out to the beach or the mountains this weekend, things don't look too promising there either, I'm afraid to say. High of 56 on Saturday and 52 on Sunday. And out in the mountains, it's an even worse case. Lower temperatures and still that rain. On Sunday, we might actually see a chance for a snow event as well. Now, Will that snow be good for skiing conditions? Probably. And there's still a lot of ski slopes open at this time of the year. Nine slopes open in Appalachian and 18 still up in Sugar Mountain. So skiing is still definitely an option, especially with that chance of snow on Sunday out there. So 
Well, here we are talking about snow and cooler temperatures, so right now you might be praying for global warming, but <laughs> <laughs> the answer to this week's weather question is a little bit disturbing. Do you have any guesses? I would think in the next 10 years, that's enough time for it to warm up. 10 degrees, maybe? Or yeah. 13? It's 10. It's all 10, right. but if you take a look at it, or if you think that it's not supposed to warm up at all, 10 degrees is kind of a lot, so we might want to start curbing some of those greenhouse gases. Yeah, wow. CFCs and hairspray. Yeah, spray. yeah so use the pump bottle. <laughs> we'll be careful. Thanks, uh -huh. Thanks. And um, now Ayana Banks is here with us for sports. I hear there's a big game this weekend. Uh, that might be a little bit of an understatement. The big game is this Sunday, and the men's team is hoping to pull out another win against Duke this weekend. We'll have more about that and going to break. The softball team is trying to start another win streak as the players captured their second straight win beating Furman. They improved to 6-1 and one on the season. North Carolina is where the wonders never cease. It's where visitors and residents alike can be touched by these things and always remember the embrace of clouds around a mountain peak. Sparkling water forever in a hurry. A bridge less traveled, an enchanted wetland forest, and the place where the sun meets the sea. In a rivalry match, it's been said that you can throw rankings and records out, and when Carolina women's basketball team took on number four Duke, that was definitely true. The Heels hanging on tough early. Candace led the way with 19 points and 10 rebounds. The Heels led for most of the way and were up four with two minutes to go. It was the second largest crowd in Duke women's basketball history, and the defending ACC champion Devils playing at home were too much. The Lady Heels dropped to 14 and 13 overall and 7 and 9 in the ACC to end the regular season. Season. Next up for the Heels, Georgia Tech on Friday in the ACC tournament. One of the greatest rivalries in all of sports comes to the Dean Dome this Sunday. And Carolina Week's very conflicted Devin Bigginess has a preview. Based on the last time these two teams met, with Carolina winning 85-83, I don't see any reason why the same thing won't happen again. And that game was at mighty Cameron Indoor Stadium, where Duke is supposed to be unbeatable. The Heel fans are going to be ready, and even though the Heels have been struggling recently... You hit the nail right on the head. The Heels have been struggling, and the Blue Devils have only lost once since that awful night in Durham. Expect Duke to take advantage of the two-time losing Tar Heels since then. The Duke senior class, led by Shane Battier, has never lost an ACC regular season title, and it's not going to happen this year. Maybe. But the Tar Heel senior, Brendan Haywood, is going to be fired up for his last game in the Dean Dome. I'm just going to go out there and um, just feed off the emotion. I'm sure I'm going to be feeling a lot of different feelings. Some people's views are a little more cosmic about this game. I did two different readings. Uh, the first reading I did was for North Carolina. And the cards and the spirits are telling me the energy is just better, okay? It shows magic and strength, so everything's pointing toward North Carolina. So as you can see, even a psychic thinks that Carolina's size and strength down low is going to be the reason why they win this game. That's our strength. Our strength is um, to get the ball inside to Brendan. I don't think they have anybody who can really match up with Brendan. I don't know what the cards say, but the Devils won in the Dean Dome last year, 90-86 to 86 in overtime. And guess what? They're going to do it again. Duke 90, Carolina 88. As the last game proved, the heels are too big and too deep for the Devils. It's senior day, the ACC regular season championship is going to be on the line, and the heels fans are going to be partying safely on Franklin Street. Carolina 82, Duke 79. In Chapel Hill, I'm Devin Bigginess. Carolina Week. We all hope that the real Devin emerges safely from this whole experience. In this week's collegiate baseball call, it, Carolina is ranked 29th. On Tuesday, the Heels hosted Davidson. With the Heels down a run in the fifth inning, Chad Prosser drives in a run with this single to tie the game at two. From there, the Heels' defense took over. Three pitches combined to strike out nine and allow only four hits in the game. The Heels added a run in the seventh and escaped a bases-loaded jam in the ninth to earn a 3-2 to two victory. Playing in the rain earlier in the week, the Tar Heels swept Seton Hall in a three-game series. On Sunday, Carolina leads 6-3 to three halfway through the contest with help from nice glove work like this from shortstop Chad Prosser. 
The Pirates tie the game in the seventh inning off this looping liner to right, bringing home Kevin Lighton. In the bottom half of the inning, outfielder Ralph Roberts doubles home Jeremy Cleveland, giving UNC the lead for a good 8-7. Carolina continues its 13-game homestand with a three-game series against UCLA this weekend. The women's lacrosse team is a pair of All-Americans on its roster. After the way the team played on Sunday, it appears there may be more than that. Not even the rank could slow down the heels in their season opener against Davidson. All-American Kelly Thompson got the heels going with this goal. She finished the game with five goals and three assists. Amy Haverla and Lindsey Stone added four goals each as the heels rode to a 17-3 win, and it was the team's most lopsided season in nearly two years. So no matter what's going on, all that's on everybody's mind is the upcoming game this game. Sunday. So good luck to everybody this weekend. And I hope that we'll have some safe street celebrations exactly. afterwards. I think if people just, <laughs> even if we win or not, I think it'll be a great thing. But, you know, react safely. I think we'll all do that this year. Thanks, Ayana. Thanks. Have you ever been to a traditional Native American powwow? Hear the sounds and see the sights next on Carolina Week. Let your knowledge grow at the North Carolina Botanical Garden through public service, research, conservation, and education. The garden brings North Carolina's rich natural heritage to you. It's a beautiful way to learn. I wonder how Silent Sam feels about guarding the university from groups of third grade kids. Maybe he's lost interest. We haven't heard his rifle fire recently. Still he stands, a steadfast defender of something. What is it? No one knows the real Carolina like a student. Carolina Week, the student news show. Honey, we need to get away. Just the two of us. You're going to have to get a full-time job. We're losing ground. We don't ever talk anymore. Susan will be ready for college next year. We used to be so close. We made twice what we made eight years ago. Now we have less to spend. I think I'm going to leave you, dear. Maybe we could sell one of the cars. Family Counseling Service of Durham. We can help. Call 286-3757. Carolina prides itself in being the university of the people, and diversity is very important on this campus. UNC Chapel Hill's Native American organization, the Carolina Indian Circle, gives the university community a chance to learn about Indian culture with its annual powwow. The sounds of flutes, drums, and song filled the air on Carolina's campus this past Saturday. Dancers, drum groups, and vendors from North Carolina's Indian tribes and urban Indian associations came together to celebrate Native American culture and educate powwow goers about their heritage. The audience even got a chance to learn some traditional dances like the buffalo dance. Carolina Indian Circle President Ben Hammond says powwows are for everyone's enjoyment. So there's a lot that can be shared. It's a great way to share our culture and to teach you know, anybody who's interested. And anybody, you don't have to be Indian to dance in a powwow, to go to a powwow, it's, it's for everyone. It's just our way of sharing, a way to get together and have fellowship and just, you know, basically enjoy each other's presence. This was the 28th annual Carolina Indian Circle powwow. There are about 160 Native American students enrolled at Carolina, representing more than half a dozen different tribes. It was a wow. really interesting event. I learned a lot about the Native American culture, and I think that people can go to these and just learn a lot about the culture. The costumes were beautiful as well. Yeah. It's very ornate, colorful. It's, it's very visual. Good story. That does it for this edition of Carolina Week. Thank you for joining us and be sure to come back next week. Until then, have a good night and a good week. Good night. <laughs>